uh, it's very dangerously so. I'm hoping that the Israeli Defense Force, um, which still has military professionals in its ranks who know reality when confronted by it. I need to remind your listeners that the last two years, Israel has, uh, before October 7th, Israel ran major uh, military exercises that uh, were designed to stress test Israel. What that means is what happens if all of Israel's enemies attack at once? Uh, what, how will Israel defend itself? Um, and what Israel realized is that they can't, that there is no defense, that Israel will lose if they do the total fight. Um, and this is pre-Gaza, meaning that the two war games that Israel uh, you know, participated in, thought of, planned out, um, didn't take into account a Gaza in revolt. They thought that the worst they'd get out of Gaza is an intifada. Instead, they have a full-scale war that's absorbed uh, a significant part of the Israeli military capacity, even without uh, a war in the north against uh, Hezbollah. Israel can't do this, and the military knows it. But this isn't, again, we have to go back to the old uh, adage, uh, you know, that goes back to Sun Tzu and Clausewitz. War is an extension of politics by other means. Um, this is about the political survival of Benjamin Netanyahu, straight up. He is a desperate man who is unwilling to have his legacy be tarnished by the reality of his defeat against Hamas. And so he is prepared to sacrifice. And when I say sacrifice, I mean it in every sense of the word. Sacrifice Israel on the altar of his ego. Israel not only will not win a war against Hezbollah, Israel will be destroyed by a war with Hezbollah because it won't just be a war with Hezbollah. The gloves will come off everywhere. Iran has already said if Israel engages in a large-scale conflict with Hezbollah and Lebanon, that it will enter and it will be a war of annihilation. This is what we're talking about, the literal annihilation of the Israeli state. Egypt is massing troops at Rafah. If you think for a second, if Israel gets involved in a decisive all-encompassing conflict with Hezbollah in the north, that Egypt will stand by idle in the south, think again. Nations that never would have thought of confronting Israel will jump on the Israeli carcass like a starving jackal because there is a lot of animosity in the Middle East. Israel has built up a deep reservoir of hatred. And as Israel goes down, and it will go down, it is going down, Israel will not survive uh, what it has started. But Israel has a choice now to allow for the peaceful collapse of Zionism because Zionism's day is over. It is finished, it is done, it is disgraced as an ideology. The world will not tolerate it. We are on the path toward a Palestine. It may take some time, but that's the direction we're heading. Or Israel can accelerate not only the timing of its defeat, but the scope and scale of the violence that will be attached to this defeat. If Israel goes to war against Hezbollah, Israel will be destroyed from the top to the bottom, from the river to the sea. That is a guarantee, and the Israeli Defense Force knows it. And here's where it gets dangerous, because Israel has factored in such a scenario, and it's called the Samson option, and that's the use of Israeli nuclear force. So for all the people out there cheering, saying, yeah, I can't wait till Hezbollah and Iran take it to Israel, understand, these sick genocidal maniacs are prepared this is the same people who embraced the Hannibal Doctrine, the Hannibal Directive. They kill their own people. They kill their own people. And they will take everybody down with them if it gets to that. So this is a very frightening moment right now in the world history. This isn't a continuation of, you know, low-scale warfare. I mean, because let's be honest, what happened in, in Lebanon in the 90s and the 80s, the 90s, um, that led to Israel's withdrawal was low-scale warfare. Even August of uh, 2006, low-scale warfare. What we're talking right now is nation termination. The scope and scale of the violence will be unimaginable on both sides. 
Lebanon will be devastated by this conflict, absolutely destroyed, because Israel will go down kicking and screaming. And at the last moment, when it becomes clear that the Zionist enterprise is about to collapse beneath the weight of the military might arrayed against it, they will lash out using their nuclear weapons. And then we, we have no idea where that takes as us. As you describe that, that uh, apocalypse, uh, as you describe that apocalypse, Scott, uh, a number of questions come into my mind. Number one, uh, why would the Israeli military allow such a low-rent individual as Netanyahu uh, to bring about the country's destruction on the altar of his ego? Why would they not mount uh, some kind of military coup? Why would they not at least engineer some kind of changing of the guard uh, at the top of Israeli politics? Number two, why would the United States allow uh, Israel to embark upon such an apocalyptic course? And why would Israel's other allies uh, do so? Uh, and thirdly, on the Samson option, although you partly answered it yourself, they are ready to kill their own people. They killed a large number of their own people on October the 7th, uh, pursuant to the Hannibal Directive. Uh, you and I at least both know that firing nuclear weapons at Lebanon uh, is a suicide mission because, of course, the wind is no respecter of national boundaries. And the radiation, uh, the, the nuclear winter, would afflict uh, the state of Israel-Palestine just as completely as it afflicted the state of Lebanon, Syria. So have a go at answering those three points, if you will. Absolutely. On the first one, understand that the prime minister is not a dictator. Um, and in Israel, uh, even though they lack a constitution, they have basic laws and they have uh, precedents. Uh, at a time of war, decisions are made by a war cabinet. And um, Israel had a war cabinet that had incorporated um, some, I mean, you and I know that Benny Gantz is not a moderate, but compared to Benjamin Netanyahu, um, he could be painted as a moderate. In many ways, his uh, ideas were equally as radical regarding Hamas and Hezbollah. But Benny Gantz uh, was supposed to be the control rod to this uh, nuclear reactor that is um, Benjamin Netanyahu. He has resigned, as have others. Uh, what Netanyahu now has done is created a new war cabinet that um, are of the most sick, mentally ill, um, mass murders, genocide embracing Zionists imaginable. These are people who, I mean, I, we know who we're talking about. The, 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 these are people who go on social media and say things that are straight out of Adolf Hitler's playbook when it comes to, um, to the Palestinians. Yeah. In order to step in, the Israeli military would have to go against decades of an understanding about civil military relationships. Uh, that the military is subordinated to civilian leadership. This would be a fundamental decision, and it may take place. They may be at that place right now because the Israeli military is not ready to commit genocide, at least, I mean, self-genocide, self-cleansing. Um, um, and so we may see this revolt. Remember, um, before October 7th, Israel was in a fundamental uh, crisis over Netanyahu's overreaching regarding uh, the courts, the judiciary, etc. And the, at that time, the Israeli president said Israel is on the cusp of a civil war, not civil disobedience, not so a civil war with Israelis shooting Israelis because of the fundamental differences. Um, if there was a military intervention, it would lead to a civil war. And all military leaders have to keep that in mind when they... Um, you know, in, in what they're thinking. But when you compare and contrast the options here, that is a better option than allowing Netanyahu to um, to to take uh, to carry out actions which will result in the physical destruction of Israel and the Israeli people. Um, so we'll see where the military, you know, we're, it's a big ask of the Israeli military right now to step in 
because it goes against precedent and it will trigger a civil war. There's no doubt about that. There will be a civil war in Israel. And many Israeli officers understand that if there's a civil war, Israel's enemies could take advantage of that conflict and it doesn't solve any problems. That maybe your best option is to go in strong against Hezbollah and hope for the best as opposed to um, intervening and engendering the the destruction of your own society. No general wants that on his shoulders. Um, As for the United States, George, we're in the middle of the stupidest presidential silly season in American history. Um, where nobody has the courage to stand up against um, Zionism, against Israel, against the Israeli lobby. The Israeli lobby is openly bragging about stealing Congress for Israel. They are bragging about it, how much money they put in. There was a race in New York uh, where Israel put in $24 million, and they are bragging about how they bought a member of Congress That's where we're at, George. You think any politician right now in this uh, upcoming election will have the courage to stand up and say no to Israel? Joe Biden can't. He, especially after that last uh, debate, his his handlers won't let him do anything or let anything be said that further weakens his position. The Democrats are desperate, and the one thing they have going for them is the Jewish vote, is the Jewish lobby, is the Jewish money. Um, I should say Zionist money, but you know, increasingly it's becoming hard in America to differentiate between the two. Um, so no, and, and no ally of Israel that isn't called the United States will go against the United States. No one will go against America. No one, no one has the um, courage, no one has the stature to go against the United States on Israel. And so this, no one's going to step in and do the right thing. Normally we talk about, and I've spoken this in the past, Friends don't let friends drive drunk. I've actually used that when I talk about America's relationship with Israel. I used that back, um, you know, in in the old days, uh, back when I was standing with Israel, hoping Israel could be turned into a nation capable of peaceful coexistence with the Palestinians. Clearly today it can't. But um, we we don't do that anymore, uh, which, which tells you that Israel is not the friend of America. We need to understand that because friends don't let friends drive drunk. Israel is a tool that's used for America for its purposes. And right now, the Arab-Israeli conflict, the Palestinian conflict uh, in Israel, is being used by American politicians to position themselves for victory in November, even though the cost of that victory could be Israel, could be the Middle East, could be the world. And then you know, lastly, about the nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, Israel, like the United States, has stopped a long time ago, stopped talking about nuclear weapons as a force of deterrence, meaning I have nuclear weapons. We will only use them when an existential threat is brought up. And then the result would be so horrific that nobody will dare uh, come at us. Israel today speaks of using weapons in Lebanon that have never been used before and have unprecedented levels of destruction. I believe Israel has developed a low-yield neutron bomb, Um, the kind of bomb that the United States, kind of weapon the United States developed for use in Europe to appease the Germans, meaning that when the Soviets came across in the old Cold War, that we would use neutron bombs, highly intense radiation, minimal destruction, very low long-term contamination. The radiation and the blast kills people, and then a week later, you can come back in and live. The Israelis have developed these neutron bombs, and these are the weapons that Israel will start out with against Lebanon. They will be dropping these neutron bombs uh, designed to take out Hezbollah, designed to collapse structures, etc. In the belief that there is such a thing as a limited nuclear war. What Israel doesn't understand, and I wish nations like Pakistan would make it more clear, um, that if Israel uses nuclear weapons, the prohibition against using nuclear weapons against Israel is lifted, and that inevitably Israel will be struck by a nuclear weapon that says made in Pakistan. Whether the delivery system is Pakistani or Iranian, we have yet to see, but Israel will not get away with using nuclear weapons even if they are low yield, even if they are neutron bombs.
Thrown into well a line of grandeur The village and we stream to convert He is my forest up and can With every step King will say the menace song with vow at hit fit a word of possibility where path a be with wisdom bed joy his year and child his correct in the free of set will his foul Deliver a burn and God the scroll in the city like a tree mom abusing us the and red to bone in his every story of time To well a line of grandeur The minute sun we stream to conquer He is my frost up and can With every step A king will say The minute sun it fell out Hit with a war of possibility Where bad a be With wisdom and joy his year and Child his caress In the dream Of so sad the will his foul Deliver a burn and golden skull in the city like a trick Now abusing us the end Friend to bone In his Every story of Town of